And now you're gonna believe us, and now you're gonna believe us, and now you're gonna believe us. The Clarets are staying up. Good evening, everyone. What's going on? It's JB here with a review of last night's big game between Chelsea and Burnley. And a message to Chelsea, stop being utter, utter crybabies. We outwitted you. We outdid you tactically. Our defending was immense. And you know what? We should have won the bloody game. And as for you, David Luiz, you little so-and-so, how dare you accuse us of being anti-football when we quite clearly scored two great goals. We should have had a third in the second half, which I'll come on to in more detail later. And also what Chelsea failed to understand is that we've played... You look at the size of our squad, you look at the quality of the two squads, Chelsea's have got hundreds, maybe billions of pounds worth of talent. We've got probably about £100 million pounds worth of talent. You know, we're always going to be inferior to Chelsea. They're top six side. We had to do what we did last night because we needed that extra point to make sure we were safe. And we did that. And we did it within the rules of the game. But I'm going to go into it in far more detail. But I just want to make it clear to Sari and to Zola and to David Louise, Burnley, but what they did last night, did not, repeat not, break any rules whatsoever. We did it well within the laws of the game. Now, if you want, if you're gonna, if you're gonna moan and groan and get sent off or whatever, you three should be reported to the FA. And as for you, Zola, I'm very, very angry with you because I used to admire you as a footballer when you played for Parma and for Chelsea and all that. And you, you know, I respect you because you played the game, right? You played the game well. You know, you had the same problems when you had to deal with avoiding relegation at West Ham. So I don't think you've got room to talk, have you, Mr. Zola? My estimation of you, which was sky high a few years ago, is right down there by right now, my friend. And I'm afraid you have lost all respect for me because you just didn't... Because you just don't know... You just don't know, really, what we've had to go through to fight and scrap and stay in the division, you know? Anyway, let's get on with the game before we start ranting and raving. We don't want to really want to do that because it would take the shine of Burnley's thing, but I just want to make the thing... Oh, and as for, as for Sarri being offended by a member of our coaching staff, get over it. You know, things happen in the game, you know? Emotions get a bit high. I think you went over the top, and you, you know, and by all the way, your antics of going over the referee, going out your technical area was a joke. So, Mauricio Sarri, do one. In fact, you should be barred from bringing any cigarette butts into the fucking ground because it's a non-smoking thing. I don't care if you don't actually smoke it or get your nicotine fix. Have it elsewhere. Have it outside during half-time or something. It's a horrible thing to have to watch. So, do one, Sarri. I hope Chelsea sack you. Just for that annoying habit alone. Anyway, on with the game. Um... Well, it was a good game of football, you know, despite what David Luiz thinks. Um, Chelsea started on the front foot, as you would expect. The ben B clear one off the line in the early stages of the game. And then, and then, uh, then with about 10 minutes gone, Jeff Henrik out of nowhere. I mean, we take a set piece, ball gets cleared out 25 yards from goal, and Henrik with his right foot just hits it into the net. It was just... A fabulous, fabulous goal. It really was. A terrific goal. And it just lit that blue touch paper for what was going to be a manic next 10 minutes. It was a terrific strike. And a lot of people have given Jeff Henrik a lot of stick. stick. Now, I'm going to defend Jeff Henrik. I mean, you know, you know, he's, he's struggled, in, you know, but Dash is always having to play him out of position. You know, for instance, earlier in the season, he was playing him behind the front, front players as sort of a false number 10. He's not that sort of player. Uh, Recently, he's been playing on the right wing. He's not really a right, gifted right winger, but he puts his heart and soul into it. I think that's what a lot of people tend to forget, really. And Jeff really played his, played well last night, so I'm going to give Jeff Henrik a bit of credit there. And uh, he, he, you know, catches his way off with a terrific goal. So, 
fair play to the man. I really do appreciate what he um, did last night. Uh, uh, Chelsea inevitably came back. Um, bit lucky, really. I thought there was a foul there by Loftus Cheek on one of our lads in the build up. Um, you, it's 50 50, in my opinion. You see him giving, you see, don't see him giving. Anyway, the ball gets fed out to the left hand side as our cutting side gives Lord the Tory time, twisting one way or another. Ball pulled back and go up. Kante, who's, who is who should be playing in his proper position of defensive midfielder. I think that he's one of the best holding midfielders in the game. Um, I don't know what sari has got in his head playing him in attacking. Last night, equalised. It was a little bit fortunate, you know, there was a little deflection, but, you know, you know, you get, you know, that, these things unfortunately happen. So, we're one one and then they get another lucky break, really, with Gonzalo Igway. Taking nothing away from the, the ferocity of his strike, but the build-up play, he was very, very fortunate to get the look off Ben Mee as he went through there. Um, good, good little black flick by Ivanovic. You've got to give him credit for that. Uh, what I will say about Iguain's shot, it was absolutely struck with some ferocity. Not even David Hair could have saved that. Let alone Tom Eaton. He was just struck with. He must have struck it. I mean, I'm, I thought the back of the net was going to break. I thought the crossbar was going to snap in half. The way he struck the shot with some velocity, and he left flying. There's no doubt about that. And Tom was never going to reach it. So, fair play. Great strike, but I think a bit lucky in the build-up there. But, you know, but uh, you know, Chelsea played with a good intensity last night. I'll give them credit for that. Um, but I'll go on to their, their dark art in a minute. Uh, but, um, and then we hit back from a free kick. Now, Chelsea defends zonally. Now, I never understand why defenders are marked zonally. Um, I'm going to pick fault with Chelsea here a little bit because, first of all, you know, first of all, the free kick gets brought in. Nobody's tracking Ben Mee. Ben Mee's just ghosted in from nowhere. Chelsea, they're back three. I've completely, they're back three of Coggers. I've completely not spotted him. He's coming around the back. He's won the header at the far post. The ball gets headed back into the danger zone. It's flicked on by Wood. And Barnes is there, like, unmarked with the freedom on the six-yard box. And he hooks the ball in past Kepa. And, and all of a sudden, we're 2-2. Two, two, and we can't believe the amount of um, the amount of uh, room that we were given, afforded in the penalty area. Chelsea just switched off. They were just stupid. But 2-2, two, two, I thought, you know, we're not playing badly, you know. You know, we might have let to ourselves, but... You know, which was showing a really good spirit, and and I can't believe we we were accused of being anti-football. Uh, I mean, we had a couple of long-range shots. Chelsea had about eight. No matter as well, I've had eighty-two shots last night. They were just uh, relentless pressure. In the second, um, you know, obviously Kante went off at half time. Or Dobson, a die pulled his hamstring. That's bad news, really, for England as well as for Chelsea. So. That's a bad, bad blow. I, I actually quite like Callum Oxford Odoi. I think he's a fantastic young English talent. And if we if we don't have him at the Nations Cup in in uh, the summer, then it's a big blow for Gareth Southgate. But I mean, said that uh, as a Burnley fan, <laughs> um, you know, getting putting my Burnley hat back on again, it you know it was nice to see. But from an England viewpoint, it wasn't. So don't get me wrong. By by the way, it, it is tragic from an England point of view. But it was great news from Burnley's point of view because he would, I think, on his days, he's a, a well beater. So to have him and Kante off with injuries, uh, that boy is up even more. The second half came. Um, just one quick note about the first half. I thought Kevin Friend was a disgrace. Um, to book Tom Eaton after 34 minutes for, for alleged time wasting was an absolute disgrace and a joke. Um, I couldn't believe I was watching. I was watching a match on Sky last night. I couldn't believe what I saw. Um, I couldn't honestly believe what I saw. Um, to book somebody for time wasting after 34 minutes. I mean, Kevin's friend. He's not my favourite referee in the world, so he's not going to be my friend. But um, if you pardon the pun. But uh, having said that, I didn't think it was a great decision. Um, I thought he was very, very trigger happy. I mean, Tom Eaton was just trying to sort out his options where he was going to kick it, um, which what most goalkeepers do. And I just found that, and I just find that amazing and baffling, and, and I felt angry about that. But 
he didn't, you know, it didn't cost us in the end, ultimately. So that wasn't, you know, be on and on. Second half, so the half, first half ended 2-2, two, two, Chelsea lose their, lose their two players. Then in the second half, Chris Ward, I think this was about 60th minute. Chelsea are obviously on sorting us and obviously we're having to bring men back and stuff like that. Um, um, and then... Um, and then, uh, and then at the, and then after 60 minutes, Chris Ward, I don't know what he was doing. He tried to get it onto his right foot, and the ball got stuck in between him. He, what an idiot! I mean, he's been great form, and I fancied him as soon as he got through. Hit it on your left foot. It doesn't matter if it's your weaker foot. Hit the damn thing across the goal. Kepa's not that brilliant, bloody brilliant, and he just wanted. He just was determined to hit it on his, um, on his better right foot. But there you go. Um, but uh, it didn't cost us the game, did it? it? You know, we weren't expected to go there and get three points like last season. I think last season's result was um, was just on one of those results that happened on an ordinary day. But this was no fluke either last night, to be fair, because we stuck in there. We had a couple of other chances, with, and that's what David Luiz doesn't seem to grasp. Now, this time-wasting, I'll, I'll go on to the... Incidents at the end uh, a bit later because there was a bit of argy bargy after the final whistle and then there was the sour thing. Just to reiterate, we weren't really time wasting. There were players that, like Ashley Barnes was genuinely injured. Ben Mee was genuinely in injured. T James Tarkovsky genuinely went down. These players have been playing game in, game out for 47 matches this season. There's, our season started in late July against Aberdeen. So what have Chelsea got just cause to complain about that? As if we're doing that to try and waste deliberately waste time. We're not deliberately wasting time. They were genuinely they were genuinely getting cramped and getting a little bit injured. It just so happens we have a very good physio in Alistair Beatty who, who seems to get who seems to have magic in his sponge. So let's let's banish all those. Banish all those allegations, shall we? Okay. Um, now then, um, um, for the life of me, they gave a five minutes of stoppage time. I don't know where they got five minutes from because it was all out Chelsea attack really for the last half an hour or so. Um, so the game was quite free flowing in my opinion. I think it should have been three minutes. And then in the fifth minute of stoppage time, I think this was a point by Chelsea. Now, allegedly, Billy Mercer, the goalkeeping coach, was uh, apparently called Sari something allegedly, I, um, you know, it's not been proven. We don't know until if if, uh, if Sky have picked up that on their sound mics. I don't know. But he's alleged to have called Sari something. Sari's, um, Sari's absolutely lost his geography. It's the last second of a game. Chelsea are drawing 2-2. Two -two. He's frustrated because Burnley are fighting for their lives. I don't think top-end managers actually understand what they're going through. I'd like to see the likes of Sari and Klopp and Pep and uh, and uh, Emery actually and Pochettino manage at the wrong end of the table and just get an insight what uh, what actual management's all about. It's all about having tens of millions of pounds to uh, you know hundreds of millions of pounds to spend. But you want to? I, I don't think Pep or Klopp would do any better managing Berlin than what Sean Dyche is doing right now on the budgets he's got to do. Um, you know, I thought Sarri's behaviour was disgraceful. I think the referee was quite right to send him off, way out of his technical uh, technical area, accusing Ashley Barnes of faking it, which was not the case. Let's get that absolutely crystal clear. Sarri just completely lost the plot. Um, Zola has gone down in my estimation. I'm surprised. I'm amazed he hasn't been fired by the FA for for the comments he's made afterwards. Um, and then there was all sorts of commotion at the end. Sean Dash, understandably, was clapping with the fans at the end. I saw that very clearly. So he doesn't. He never had any involvement in what in those shenanigans, and he could just said it was just handbags and uh, at ten paces, basically, uh, or something to that extent. Um, as regards Chelsea, they're just a bunch of wimps. You know, they they they're overpaid, over pampered. They want well, protection from the referees. They expect us to try and play, a, try and attack them every single five minutes, so the, the space opens up for their so-called creative players to try and, you know, they want us to roll over and lose eight-one. We're not going to do that. 
There are t- we are fighting. We had to get a point at least to stay in the Premier League. We've done that. I was absolutely ecstatic when that final whistle blew. What has pissed me off really since then is David Luiz has falsely accused us of being anti-football. So too is Sari. So too is Zola. I've got a message for you three. Get over it! Get over it! And as for you, David Luiz, you've got room to talk. You were in the Chelsea side that played, uh, allegedly played anti-football in the 2012 Champions League final. Didn't Bayern Munich batter you for 88 minutes or was it something like that? And then you're only saved by Didier Drogba. So you've got room to talk, Mr. Louise. I suggest you shut up, get off your high horse, and actually look at your own team's bloody inefficiencies instead of talking about Burnley and slagging us off and knocking us because we needed to get a result yesterday just to make sure of our Premier League status. But Pete, you guys at the top end couldn't give a monkeys, really. But I don't care. Listen, what we did yesterday, let me set the record straight. What we did yesterday was well within the laws of the game. We are fighting to stay in the division. Listen, we have gained... So, what... If we were so anti-football, why have we gained 28 points since Boxing Day and we're now fifth in the form table? If this was over half a season, we'd be fighting for a Champions League spot. So, how are we actually supposed to be, how are we playing anti-football? How can we be fifth in a form guide playing anti-football? It's a joke. Anyway, we're up to 40 points. That's the important thing. And I think that's the bigger picture we've got to look at. And I thought Sean Dyche was quite measured in his interview. Um, and I take his side of things, obviously. Um, Chelsea, they've got to look at their conduct because... You know, that's not the behaviour. The fans, the Chelsea fans were a disgrace to their club yesterday, accusing us of falsifying them, accusing us. I've been, you know, I've been jousting on YouTube, Facebook, uh, with a few, uh, on, and some, on Match of the Day with a few of them saying, oh, you were this, that, the other. So I've been fighting back. So how come we score two cracking goals and almost got a third in the second half? That's not anti-football, is it? So, you know... If, I mean, take it as you will, but my opinion is we we did come and play football. We scored two goals. We could have had a third in halfway through the second half, conceivably, if would have kept his head and just went with his left foot. We might have won the game. So for Chelsea, yeah, Chelsea I mean, the stats will say oh, Chelsea had about 30 shots at goal. How many of those were flashing way over the bar and into road Z? You know... And I thought, and uh, just to finish on a positive note, Ben Mee, what a colossus. I've, I've dissed him in the past. I've dissed him in the first half of the season. But since Tom Eaton's come back into the side and the captaincy has been taken off his shoulders, Ben Mee has been a player transformed for me. And he's he's back to the man he was the last couple of years and throwing his body in the way of things and winning every single header in every second ball. Same applies to James Tarkovsky. They were just colossus and... Either one of them could have got man of the match. And I'm glad Sky saw the sight and gave Ben Mee man of the match instead of Eddie Hazard because it's actually nice to see someone who puts in a lot of work, work, work dedication, puts his body on the line and be brave uh, and the, in the bid to get, your te- get his team a point. I thought that was magnificent. Ben Mee, absolutely 100% nailed on man of the match. Right, so we're staying up now. I, I mean, we're eight points, I think we're nine points above Cardiff. Um, with three games to go, I can't see us. I mean, we're, we're as good as safe. I know mathematically we're not, but Cardiff would need to win the last three games, us to lose and have a 17 goal swing. So I can't see that happening. Our goal difference is quite good, so uh, compared to Cardiff's. So, you know, we need to have a 17 goal swing go against us, and that's highly unlikely. So we're safe for next season. And uh, Chelsea, you've got to put up with us again. <laughs> yeah, if you've enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you haven't subscribed and you'd like to subscribe to the JB Claret YouTube channel, please do subscribe. If you want notifications, hit that notification bell. And don't forget, next month I'm launching a brand new channel, JB2, which would, which is going to be non-football material, but it's still going to be as entertaining and as good when I talk about things like politics and Brexit and TV and that. So look out for that next month. You'll see the actual video itself um, 
uh, on the YouTube channel. So check that out. But thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I'll see you later.